Hello friends, in this video I'll be discussing about the TRS which stands for Tropical Revolving Storm. I'll be discussing the characteristics and more importantly how to detect and avoid it. As the name suggests, it is dangerous for the ships and navigation and thus it must be avoided at any cost. A TRS is basically a cyclone which is a rotating mass of warm and humid air creating thunderstorm with strong winds. It normally develops between the month of July to October in between latitudes 10 degree and 30 degree in northern and southern hemisphere. The wind speed in the TRS region goes up to 150 knots and it covers an area from 50 nautical miles to 800 nautical miles. The TRS follows a specific path in northern and southern hemisphere. However, we can never be sure about the vertex of the TRS. A TRS gains energy from the latent heat which is received from the condensation of moist air. Thus, on hitting the land, TRS always dies out because the moisture content on land is much less than at sea. The eye of the TRS is the most dangerous point of a TRS and it must be avoided. So the question is, as a navigator, what can you do to avoid it? And the first step to that is, you have to find your location with respect to the location of the TRS. To find that out, we have certain signs you can use. The first rule is that you face the true wind and the storm center is 8 to 12 points on the right in northern hemisphere and left in the southern hemisphere. Another indication to locate the eye of the TRS is observe the direction of swell. The swell is coming from the eye of the TRS. And another thing you can do is look for the densest part of huge bank of clouds that is the eye of the TRS. Then the drop in barometric pressure is a great indication to find out how far one is from the storm center. If the pressure falls by 5 millibars, then you are more likely in the outer storm area. However, if the pressure falls 20 millibars, then you are very near to die. And of course, monitor the weather reports received from the shore. That gives an accurate prediction of its current path and track. Now imagine that this is a TRS in Northern Hemisphere. It has two semicircles, right hand semicircle and left hand semicircle, considering this is the track and this is the path of TRS. Track basically is the path which it has already followed, that means the past of the TRS and the path which is the future of the TRS or the predicted future of the TRS. Now in Northern Hemisphere, the right hand semicircle is also called dangerous semicircle and the left hand semicircle is called navigable semicircle. Now instead of blindly accepting this, let's find out why is it called so. If you see this whole diagram, you see that the TRS is moving in this direction. The wind is coming from this direction. So the sum of the motion of this TRS and the wind speed causes more danger in this side than on this side. Thus, the name is given dangerous semicircle and navigable semicircle. Now that in the previous steps you have located the eye of the TRS with respect to your current position, you still do not know which semicircle are you in. So the first thing you need to identify as a navigator is which semicircle are you in? So let's say I'm on this ship. If I face the true wind, which appears to be coming like this, and I'm standing like this, then 8 to 12 points is the storm center. So this is how you get the storm center. Now I know the storm center, but I'm still not sure whether I'm on the dangerous or the navigable semicircle. So what I'll do is I'll start taking the wind observation. On the right hand semicircle, the wind always veers and the left hand semicircle, the wind backs. And this is same for, for both the hemispheres, 
northern and southern hemisphere and how is that happening let's do the same thing if the ship is in this position and i'm entering the outer say outer area of this trs i will face the wind coming from east and as i move in i face the wind coming from south so what did really happen east and then south that means the wind is veering if i was here first i'll face the wind which is coming from north as i go further in this wind direction will change as i am on this layer it will become westerly now so from north to west what is really happening is wind is veering so it's same on both northern and southern hemisphere now we know which semicircle are we in now what is the best path to avoid it the best path is to get out of get away from it as soon as possible so once i'm aware of the semicircle i am in the rule is simple if i am on the right hand side keep the wind on the starboard bow in northern hemisphere 1 to 4 points so let's see how that will help let's say i'm here i keep this wind on 1 to 4 points and then i keep proceeding as the wind changes the direction i change and keep the wind on 1 to 4 points and i get out of here so this is basically how my track will look like i will slowly get away from it and if i am on the left hand semicircle i keep the wind on the starboard quarter for northern hemisphere so this is the wind coming from north i keep it on the starboard quarter and i keep moving out as i move out the wind direction changes a bit i change the ship's heading and i'll be out of here so this is how you will get out of the way in northern hemisphere now let's do a comparison of the southern hemisphere also now this is my trs in the southern hemisphere which is rotating clockwise this also has one right hand semicircle and left hand semicircle only difference is in southern hemisphere the right hand semicircle is navigable in the northern hemisphere the right hand semicircle was dangerous in the southern hemisphere left hand semicircle is dangerous that's the only difference remaining everything stays the same the wind veers in the right hand semicircle even in the southern hemisphere the wind backs in the left hand semicircle even in the northern so southern hemisphere now only thing is the avoiding action let's make a study for that in northern hemisphere you kept the wind on the starboard bow in southern hemisphere you keep it on the bow but port bow let's say this is my ship's position currently wind is coming like this i keep it 1 to 4 points on my port bow as i proceed along this course keep i keep turning as the wind direction is turning and slowly i'll be moving away from it okay keeping the wind 1 to 4 points on the port bow for the left hand semicircle i do the same for the port quarter keep it 1 to 4 points let's say i start from here i i'm keeping the wind 1 to 4 points on the port quarter and as i move in this direction as the wind direction is backing i keep altering my course to starboard and slowly i'll be away from the eye so you can see the action is similar for the right hand semicircle you keep it keep the wind on the bow starboard bow in northern hemisphere port bow in southern hemisphere for the left hand semicircle you keep the wind quarter starboard quarter in northern hemisphere and port quarter in southern hemisphere for examination purpose let's do a comparative study between trs and tld tld stands for temperate latitude depression and it occurs between latitude 30 degrees and 60 degrees and this is not as dangerous as trs the wind speed is as low as 50 knots and as you can see area covered by a tld is 1000 to 2000 nautical miles in diameter while trs was just 50 to 800 nautical miles in tld there are two air masses involved and because of this 
there is a lot of temperature variation as you pass through this however in trs there is only one air mass involvement so not much of a temperature difference and uh, trs travels from east to west while tld travels from west to east tld gains energy from lifting of warm air mass by cold air mass while trs was gaining energy from the latent heat released from the condensation of moist air the isobar pattern changes in tld and not much changes in trs and the wind speed increases with height in tld while the wind speed decreases with height in trs i hope you liked this video and it fulfilled your purpose thank you for watching